Hi, everybody. It is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we're getting into topic 2.6, which is on facilitated diffusion. We talked about membrane transport in our last topic video. We discussed the difference between active transport and passive transport. Um, passive transport being the movements of molecules across a membrane from high concentration to low concentration. That does not require any energy. Um, and active transport being the opposite, typically moving molecules from low concentration to high concentration against the, what's called the concentration gradient and spending a little bit of energy in the form of ATP in order to do that. Um, so today we're going to talk about a type of passive transport called facilitated diffusion. Um, so you might be able to figure it out just what that means based on the word here um, and the picture that I have right here. So diffusion we already talked about as being the movements, the natural movements of molecules to go from a high concentration to a low concentration to spread out. Um, facilitated, if you know what facilitate means, well, it's to make something easier. Okay, so facilitating a, pro a project or like a discussion means like starting it up and getting it going and making it easier to start. Uh, so facilitated diffusion means that, all right, it's making it easier for certain things to diffuse. What could that be in the context of? All right, I showed you this animation in your last video. All right, I had some sodium on the outside of the cell. And guess what? It's just going to pass a transport to the inside of the cell, right? Because there's a whole lot of it. There was, uh, let's see, let's watch it again. There was six ions on the outside, and now there's three, uh, three and three on each side. Um, so it's moving down its concentration gradient. It's going from high to low concentration. But they have to travel through this channel protein over here. Okay, because if you recall, sodium can't pass through the bilayer. It does not want to interact. It can't interact with those nonpolar regions of the, the phospholipid bilayer, the fatty acid tails and the phospholipids, right? So it's going to require a channel protein to go from high to low concentration. And that's facilitated diffusion, all right? This channel protein made it easier for the sodium to go from the outside in and diffuse. Okay, so here's your uh, formal definition. It's just passive transport that requires a channel protein. That's pretty much it. Okay, so ions like potassium and sodium require channel proteins as well as some large polar molecules because remember, polar doesn't want to interact with the nonpolar parts of the fatty acid tails, or excuse me, the fatty acid tails of the uh, of the bilayer. Okay, so those uh, large polar molecules are going to have to pass through some uh, channel proteins as well. All right, so these channel proteins facilitate; they make it easier for these particular molecules, the charged molecules, and the uh, um, polar molecules to diffuse. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, some interesting stuff can happen when you have uh, when you have different amounts of ions on each side of the membrane. Remember, we talked about how cells can control and kind of manipulate uh, their concentration gradients. Right? They can still let certain stuff in. They can close up channels um, and they can push stuff out. They can use energy to push stuff out or push stuff in. Um, against their concentration gradient, all right? And then the selective permeability of the membrane itself makes it so that cells are, can really control what goes in and what goes out, all right? And here's another application of that, okay? So check it out. Let's just say I have some sodium on the outside of my cell. Uh, the sodium wants to get into the cell, right? There's a whole lot of sodium. Well, it's highly concentrated out here. And then there aren't any sodiums on in here on the inside of the cell. So it wants to get in, right? So one thing a cell can do is it can kind of close off this channel protein over here. So I'm just gonna go wah, wah. Let's just say that that's closed. Um, okay, so hang on, let me, there we go, okay. Um, so let's just say that that's closed. The sodium can't pass through, right? Um, and if I am trying to get sodium out of the cell, all right, I can use this ion transporter and some active transport, there's my ATP, to push some sodiums out into the extracellular space or outside of the cell. All right, and what cells are able to do with uh, sodium and other ions like this are established charge differences between the outside and the inside of the cell. Okay, so remember, sodium is positively charged, right? So the presence of a whole lot of these positively charged ions makes a net positive charge on the outside of the cell and a net negative charge on the inside of the cell, which is kind of cool a little bit, all right? <clears throat> Now, if you take human anatomy and physiology, that's another class that I teach, 
um, then you will be learning a lot about membrane potentials and how that applies to, um, like, say, the contraction of muscle fibers and the propagation of action potentials by a neuron, right? So, like, basically how do brain cells and nervous system cells send signals? Um, it has a lot to do with these positive and negative charges on the opposite sides of the cell. All right, um, that's a little beyond the scope of the AP Biology curriculum, at least in this topic. Um, so I'm just going to kind of just let you know here that ions, when they are uh, when they're controlled where they are on the inside of the outside of the cell, they can make a cell what's called polarized, okay? Um, it can make the membrane oppositely charged. And here's another picture, right? Uh, here's a positively charged exterior of the cell. Here's a negatively charged interior surface of the cell. Um, and yeah, cells can open and close channels and manipulate concentration gradients to uh, make their membranes different, polarized, all right, to make them charge, kind of like a battery, if you think of it that way. A battery has a positive end and a negative end, right? And that batteries can be used to uh, propagate electricity. Um, and cells can do stuff like that too. But again, I won't go too far into it. Um, but that polarization piece is uh, pretty cool. All right, I got one more animation here and it just looks like it's starting without me. Um, but check it out, I got some good old water molecules. Now, water is polar. One of the first things I taught you this year, right? So if water's polar, can't pass through the bilayer, well, it can in very small amounts because water is a very small molecule. It can just kind of slip through the cracks a little bit. Um, but if I want water in large amounts, all right, to go into the cell or out of the cell, we're going to talk about an application of that in the next topic, um, then we're going to use facilitated diffusion, all right? And the name of the channel protein has a special name, uh, the name of the channel protein that allows for the diffusion of water osmosis in large amounts is what's called an aquaporin over here. So this blue square rectangle rectangle i know geometry um is over here it's called a it's called an aquaporin and its job is to facilitate the diffusion of water so here it is it's a channel protein that transports large quantities of water that's that's key right there large quantities of water across the membrane because water can pass through in the bilayer um in very small amounts because it's such a small molecule all right um, that's pretty much it for this topic. It's a short one. Here it is. Uh, if I, in case I missed anything, facilitated diffusion. What is it? It's passive transport that requires channel proteins. Uh, facilitated, those uh, proteins facilitate. They make it easier for charged ions or polar molecules, large polar molecules to diffuse or water too. Uh, the movements of ions can cause membranes to become polarized and they can have charges on opposite sides of the membrane, a positive, negative, negative, positive, et cetera. And plants, or plants, and cells can do pretty cool things with that, all right? But maybe we'll get into that later. We'll see. Um, aquaporins are channel proteins that allow for facilitated diffusion of large amounts of water. That's pretty much the gist of topic 2.6 on facilitated diffusion. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and we're going to get into some osmosis and tonicity and some fun stuff pretty soon. So uh, we'll see you next time.